What is up, everybody? My name is Justin. This is Forever Self-Employed. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the four keys to success in your business in 2023. And this is really relatable to any business out there. We're going to be kind of focusing on pressure washing, but you could, you know, dial this in with your lawn care business, with your, you know, mobile detailing business, really any service business, you can kind of plug and play with this. I'm joined with a bunch of special guests. I got Cody, Aaron, and Mike in the building. Mike is a little uh, incognito right now. How's it going, yeah, fellas? Hey. He didn't pay his power bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lights got cut off. <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up, guys in the chat? How y'all doing? If y'all are here, go ahead and hit it with a thumbs up for Justin's channel and say what's up in the chat. We're glad y'all are here. Dude, you know we need it because uh, sometimes these lives don't get as many likes as they should. But before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's video, I want to tell you guys about WashCon. If you guys want to come hang out with us live, in person, learn from us in person, you know, shake our hands, take pictures, whatever, you know what I mean, and get a deep dive on basically what's going to move the needle in your business for 2023. We are hosting WashCon February 10th, right, or February 11th? 10th and 11th. Uh, 10th is regular day, 11th is Saturday, and that'll be for VIP tickets. And we've sold a bunch of VIP tickets. So if you want to do the VIP, that was the same thing last year. We sold out of VIPs first. So that's what everybody's looking to do. And that's a, that's a second day. Uh, lunch catered both days. Um, we'll get some really good food in there. And we're going to go out in the field, on possibly go out in the field. But I do have something set up at the shop. Uh, so it is at the Southeast Off Wash headquarters. Uh, a lot of equipment there to kind of look at, but we're not, that's not the point of it. We're not dragging you over equipment to make, so we don't care about that. It's a lot of training. Last year was great in Nashville. We're going to do it at the shop this year. It'll be a little bit, I think, logistically easier. So, yep, yep. Grab your ticket. Absolutely. And it's, we've got a lot less space. So we've limited the number of tickets uh, significantly from last year. So, definitely uh hop in before it gets yep. uh, sold out i've got a lot of space but it's a working building as well so i've got like you know 6500 6, square feet but a lot of that's took up with stuff uh so the spot we can do a presentation in we we're gonna pare it down that way we make sure we don't overbook um it'll be fun it'll be a lot of fun i think we'll actually have better engagement because we won't be running around trying to stage everything you know it's, it's that i'm there every day so i can make sure all that stuff's took care of right absolutely so yeah like like cody said we have two two different types of tickets standard ticket vip includes an extra day where we kind of dive deep into your business as well you kind of get a little bit more access um and it's going to be great we're also giving away um some equipment might give away a few other things as well and as cody mentioned you know the longer you wait the more tickets we're going to sell and we do have a limited amount. So if you guys want to check this out, like we talked about February 10th um, and 11th, there's only 37 days left. I will leave a link. It'll be the first link in the comment section and the description. Um, check it out, man, and come uh, and come visit us. Do we want to talk a little bit about what we're going to be sharing at WashCon? Yeah, we can. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to forget to mention this, but my bookkeeper um, slash office manager slash wife will also be there on that Saturday. She's not part of the core four. She's like core 4.2. Uh, but she's going to go over some bookkeeping basics. It's not a bookkeeping class, but just a lot of guys that are brand new to their service business, some general things you need to know to make sure that your books are squared away. So she'll have about a, an hour spiel that Saturday morning for the VIP guys. Um, just like today, here's a, here's a word you guys have probably never heard of called a nexus point. The company has hit a bunch of nexus points because we do so much uh, in online sales that we're having to figure out sales tax in other states now. So there was about five states today that we had to get set up with for, and I really hate it. I, I don't like it. The government, I don't like that, but it is the way they, they kind of have it set up. So little things like that probably ain't going to apply to a guy on a wash truck, but other similar type things to make sure that you're, you're out there hustling and working and making good money all year that you don't turn around and, and have a landmine waiting on you when you file your taxes. That is not fun. I've been there. Fortunately, we were able to handle it, but you don't want to, you don't want to step on that landmine after a great year and you go into tax time and you realize that you're screwed. Absolutely. And that's obviously one of the most overlooked parts of the business because we have to wear so many hats, right? You have to market, you have to sell, you got to do the quoting, you got to do the cleaning. And then I guess and, always on the back burner is the books, right? Like you don't really worry about the books till it's time to meet the tax man. <laughs> you want to do the books right, you know? No, you don't. But you want to do them. <laughs> You want to do them right as you 
I don't want to do them right at all. Like I'm, I'm fine with anarchy, but I've got the anarchist cookbook. It, my personal theory is if you're not on a list somewhere, you're not American hard enough. Um, but you want to make sure that if you ever do get audited, that you're, you're square and you're not going to be in trouble. I write off everything. I, me and Aaron both kind of, we, we think the same way about this. We want to play as close to the edge as possible. Donald Trump said it, you know, best. If there's a loophole there, it's there for a reason. So, um, all that stuff really adds up. If you're used to clocking in somewhere and working and then you start a business, you're not thinking about none of that stuff. You're not realizing that if you're working out of your house, there's so many square feet of your house that you get a percentage. You can write off as office space. Uh, lots of things like that to get that tax bill down. You know, you also have to be careful about a, a lot of guys think they want to show a loss. Be strategic with that because if you need to buy a house in two years and you show a loss for, you know, two years, then you ain't buying ain't a bank in the world going to loan you any money if you don't need to buy anything. These are all things that we'll, we'll go through the details and make sure that you're, whatever you're doing, you're being strategic. You may want to show a little bit more profit and pay a little bit of taxes so that you, but your bigger plan is I'm going to build a house in five years. And, you know, I'm thinking down the road. Beautiful. Uh, so yeah, we will my, have my accountant thing. always says, uh, oh, good, AP. Dude, I, I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a little bit of a lag, buddy. Sorry about that. But my accountant always says, Cody, for that, he says, uh, don't don't jump over a dollar to get to a quarter. No. So when you start talking about write-offs and stuff like that, he's always – he's advising. Like, bro, I got to write – I'm writing it all off. You know how I am. You know how you are. We're all kind of like that. But it's like – he's like, I, I realize that. He goes, but paying a little bit's not a – he goes, you're in a good spot right now. Yeah. He's like, you're probably going to pay about the same as what you did last year. Right. You got it. Right. He goes, don't jump over a dollar to get to a quarter. And right. I was, dude, that was, that's just what I needed to hear. Cause I was about to liquidate. You know what I mean? I was, I, right. I'm, I'm, I'm very similar in that way. I'm like, what, what can we put it into? What can we invest yeah. it into to where we don't show as much? But like you're saying, if you want to buy a house, the bank's going to say, Hey, I need to see some income. You're going to have to have pay. So you're, it's, it's a take it or, it's your, your catch 22 there. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so that's going to be covered. I'm going to be going deep on the Facebook ad strategy as well as um, shorter term strategies, you know, uh, flyer strategies, basically uh, yard signs, things that can get you jobs really quickly. I know AP is going to cover the long game, right, Aaron? Absolutely. So I'm going to be covering, you guys know that I, I harp on the website big time. I mean, just this past year, what did we do, Cody? We doubled the revenue of the company yep. on the website. We doubled right. the revenue. The power of a website, I think a lot of guys miss. Um, and I even think guys who've kind of ran through my protocols, sometimes they can get a little lackadaisical. I'll look on their websites every now and then. I check up on them. And I could see kind of what they're doing and what they're not doing. So I'm on my part, my segment, I'm going to be going over the long game. The long game is the website game. It's something that – um google still allows us to operate within their environment that they they own the internet if you will yahoo's not really a thing bing is probably something my grandmother uses uh, you may get a little traffic from bing it's there but google is what we're going to be talking about on my segment and the long game on how to beat your competition uh through the website and through google absolutely so it's going to be uh, this one of the things I think about with WashCon is so successful and it's us in general, the core four in general, the, this is strategic guys. We're, we're not just doing something to be doing it. These are the, the four in my mind, at least key areas of a service business where they're talking about long game and short game, Justin and Aaron are marketing guys. Okay. And they're two different versions of that. And I like it because they're aligned, but there's not a lot of, there's overlap, but it's good overlap. Me and Mike are kind of in alignment with what we teach, but it's totally different topics, but they kind of mesh together. And let me explain that. So when you start a company brand new, let's say you're getting into it this year, or maybe you started it, you know, Q4 of last year, you ain't going to have a site doing much for you. Now you need to be planting the tree, but the site ain't going to really pay any dividends until, you know, late into the year. If, even if you really feel it, in the next year, you probably will, but it'll be late. So there's where Justin comes in because Justin is by far the biggest guy in social media in our industry, possibly 
all of service-based businesses that we're talking about views into the billions. Okay. That's with a B. So if you think social media is powerful and if you don't, you're wrong, but social media is very powerful. Wouldn't you want to learn that from the guy that is, it's like, it's not even debatable who, who owns the social media, uh, Justin. This is great, Cody. I love this. Please keep going. I'm just saying, you know, because (laughs) these old fat neck dudes in the industry don't know what to do with the Justin because he's a young guy and he's, he's his thumbnails. They don't understand the the angle that you're doing. They don't understand like he does. He's doing it wrong. No, it's all strategic, but you know, Justin's name, Justin don't know your name. So that's who you want to learn from. Right. And then the long game with Aaron on getting the website going so that you're, you're running Facebook ads and he, you got the king of Facebook ads and yard signs and flyers go with that kind of building one leg of the pyramid. Meanwhile, Aaron's going to teach you how to build the base of the pyramid so that this thing starts paying off uh, over the long haul. And then you can then once this starts hitting the base, the website, now you can pepper in, you know, the other things as you want to. But you kind of you got to have both. We do both. We just did six point three million dollars last year. We do both. We do website look at this and if you guys can see that's one day's worth of orders off of the website all right i processed all that yesterday because ty is uh he's out his son's having some some issues with his ankle um ty's normally our website guy but we do both we got website we got social media and so it's the same for a wash guy you want to make sure you're not only focusing on yard signs. You're not just focusing on Facebook. You're not just focusing on the website. You're focusing on all of them and you're doing them when it makes sense. And I think Aaron, you can attest to this. If they get that, then they'll understand the timeline of when these things should hit. So they don't have expectations that, you know, they didn't plant the tree, but then they want the the fruit. I think it's a lot easier for a guy to write the check. Whatever he can, uh, have predictable outcomes. Um, I think most service guys are coming into this game and it's a big fog for them as it was for me. Right. And they don't know that certain expenditures are just normal. Right. And, but, but if I can give them like the pin pointed expenditure, I'm like, no, 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 we need to put a thousand on this. Just go with me. Uh, you only probably need to put 200 on that. Right. Like, but this is where you need to be. Like, if I can give them that roadmap, how much time research, bro? I've seen guys who've been in the game for 15 years and still haven't figured this stuff out. Right. Hey, it's like just because you're in it for a long time doesn't mean you're gonna figure this out. It's it's really a skill set that you have to either have a consultant uh, tap. You need to tap into that guy, pay him, or you come to an event like this, talk to me, sit through my presentation. I'm gonna give you like the spark notes, um, the in-depth spark notes. Cody knows like when, when guys would come to a serious starter book, like, like we would have people walking out like zombies, dude, they'd have a legal pad full of stuff. And I was just bound to determine I was not going to let them leave and say they didn't get their money's worth. So I, I told Cody, I'm like, bro, I'm about to like blow their brain up because I wanted them to have their money's worth on learning this learning Google for their business so they can just turn it into revenue. Dude, it it makes me, there's nothing that makes me happier except probably playing with my son than watching some of these guys tell me in like year two, year three, that I'm watching these guys who've watched our channels, who've taken our courses and they're doing 350, 400, 500,000 a year. It makes me so happy. And these are guys who came through the original courses, came to the events. It's just cool to see the progression. And so, that's what we're going to, that's what I'm going to be impressing upon you in the core four is as well. Yep. Absolutely. So obviously uh, we're going to be handling some good stuff. Mike, you want to talk a little bit about what you're going to be uh, talking about at WashCon? Yeah. So I apologize. I had to hop off and doing a little uh, carpooling with uh, the youngster this evening, but yeah. So really the main focus that, that I like to, um, that I like to talk about um, is the automation the organization of your business, the systems that you need to have in place to maximize your time, to make you as efficient as possible. I understand that most guys are out there and uh, they're on the truck. They are working their asses off all day long, um, trying to keep up with you know the things that you need to keep up with in order to run a business, right? You're the accountant, you're the bookkeeper, you're the marketing guy. You're the CEO. You're also the labor. Okay. So 
one of the things that I've done really well in my business is automate just about everything so that um, you can you can still handle all of those tasks and it's not gonna it's not gonna be detrimental to the success of your business because I see and I know you guys also see what happens all the time is these guys they get so in over their head they're like hey I'm gonna start a business I can pressure wash I can soft wash I can do this but then they realize there's a hell of a lot more to it than just squirting some water and squirting some bleach, right? It's a business and you have to run it like a business. You have to treat it like a business. And one, one of the biggest keys to success for any business is organization, is automation, is efficiency. And so those are the things that I'm going to walk you guys through, uh, and as well as the communication and, and how to utilize technology to your benefit um, in your business. So that's, that's my little... Uh, you know, in a nutshell, recap. It's so, it's so powerful, though, because what you're doing with what what Mike teaches is, like, even at, at the last WashCon, I was like, dang, like, I had little moments where I was like, I could do this slightly different, you know, it's because you're going from being reactive to proactive, and that's what you want to do. If you can spend, think about this, you guys that have maybe run a truck for a season, nothing is more frustrating than you're out there trying to watch a freaking house and the phone's ringing, and you got to answer the phone. You're like, if I don't answer the phone, I'm going to miss this lead, and I need the lead, but I need to watch the house, and I need, I'm need i on a ladder, and I'm going to fall and die. It's like simple little things that automate. It's like Quote IQ. It's one of the reasons why, Mike, you know, your mind it goes to Quote IQ because that's where you live is to a simple thing that it does like 86 things for you that are seamless it's doing so many things that it, you don't even, you probably can't even tally all the things it's trying. It's just making it seamless. I've been in the business. My dad freaking almost, I can't lay my hand on the Bible and say dad invented roof cleaning, but I'll take my hand off the Bible and say it like dad, dad pretty much invented roof cleaning. Do you know how many years we did it like the hardest way possible? Not the, not the cleaning. You figure that out pretty, pretty quickly, you know, how to be efficient. It, that's not hard, but it's the, like we were stupid. We did stuff like the hardest possible way. But how would you know? I mean, you you don't know unless you go shadow with another guy, and and that's that's not going to happen. So, Mike teaches streamlining. I guess that's probably the best word. Is yeah, streamlining. Things I, get, things I get to do now is I get to hire people to do that, right? And they just figure it out. But if you're one man or even a guy and a helper, you ain't hiring six, seven dudes. But if you can automate these tasks, that technology can do a lot of that for you. It is the biggest lever you can pull to move a boulder. And it's, it starts making things really gain traction to where you don't hate washing anymore. It's like I've seen so many guys, they quit their job, they get equipment, they love it, the freedom, they're making money. And in a year, they're back to being frustrated with life again. Yes, they're still making money. Yes, they like the fact they own their own business, a little bit of pride there, but they're back to being unsatisfied because their days are so hectic because they're in reaction mode and they never took the time to build the systems. Right. And that's one of the biggest things, Cody, is is these guys, they become tethered to the truck. And wh why do why do we all do this for freedom? Right. For time, freedom, for financial freedom. And if if and if, if you don't put these systems into place, if you don't automate, if you don't streamline your business, then you are always going to be the guy on the truck that is frustrated, that is chasing the dollar every single day. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be like that at all. I mean, yeah. we are we are in uh, in a place in, in the world with technology right now where we have things at our fingertips that, that I didn't have five, 10 years ago. And if I would have, it would have made my life a lot easier and I would have been more successful much sooner. Um, so we need to we need to take advantage of everything that we have at our fingertips, implement those things in our business, use them, not just talk about them, not just watch YouTube videos about them, not buy a training course and never do anything with it. And that's the biggest thing. And the other thing I think that is so important about, you know, the inner circle uh, as well as WashCon is that accountability is the is having guys right there with you, looking you in the eye, saying, I'm going to follow you. I'm, I want to see you succeed. I want, I want to watch this journey. Um, we're going to give you the tools that you need. You just have to take them and implement them, right? There's no magic bullets. Coming to WashCon, it's not going to solve any problems for you unless you put the things into action that we talk about. 
It's also going to put you around people that are like Mike and who have achieved the freedom of having other people washing while he's doing other things. Like where else can you find somebody kind of running a business like that? And you can kind of get a piece of their mind. You can get in front of them. You can ask them questions like, good luck, man. Cause at, at the end of the day, that's our goal. Like Mike said, it's freedom. It's time, freedom, freedom to make choices, freedom to be with family when you want to, it's freedom to do what you want on the weekends. And if you implement the systems that Mike has in place, we'll go ahead and knock that out. It's going to be good. So, WashCon, check it out, comment section and the description. Let's go ahead and jump into uh, our four keys to success. And they kind of, you know, fall in the same lines of what we're going to be teaching. Cody, you want to jump in first and, and tell us uh, what the key to success is in 2023? Yeah, well, we've kind of hit a good bit of it. But my my piece of it that that I push is equipment. OK, and I'm like the I'm like the the equipment guy that that I don't I'm I'm, I'm a weird person. I sell equipment. But at the same time, I tell you, that's not the answer, because if you got a hungry dude that's got some sense, he'd probably do it with a pump up sprayer, but it's going to suck. It is going to suck. Um, but you got to have equipment. The truth is you got to have good equipment that makes your day efficient so that you can do, you know, three to five jobs a day is I, I kind of want to do three a day cause I I'm lazy. Um, and I know I can do three and not break a sweat, you know, three or four, but we're going to be talking about proper equipment selection, um, overkill, underkill where you want to be you know where's wasting money versus where, where does it make sense to spend some money and how do you want to set things up um some of that's personal preference but we've got 2,000 systems and counting in the field you know we're building six this week so every week that goes by we add five to seven systems to that number um we've got them in japan norway south america canada freaking somewhere out in the middle of the pacific i can't remember so equipment is the the thing that people like to talk about because it's a tangible and I almost hate that in a way, because like what we're talking about, you'll forget these other three components and you'll only think about the one, but it is important. We're also going to talk about a lot of chemical stuff. Uh, we've got a full chemical lineup. We're rolling out another one this week for efflorescence, a really good efflorescence product. So we'll talk about a lot of that stuff. Um, upsells. Beauty, let me, let me just interject real quick. The beauty about uh, the chemicals, right? And, and we're going to talk about chemicals, right? What they do. But more importantly, the upselling, right? Because right. these specialty chemicals, it's not, yeah, it's cool that you can do this or you can do that. But when you can upsell and you can add on additional services and make tremendously uh, or make a, a bunch more money because now you've got the ability to to remove rust, to, to remove right. effervescent or how I can't say it. There's a song, I think. But like there's the mud mayday, the degreasers, all of these things are just are just crazy. Dude, this this today I sent out an email to my huge email list uh, to my customer base uh, about rust removal. We've had a ton of uh, we've had a ton of water, a ton of rain uh, and we've got a bunch of iron in the soil and rust is everywhere. And so I was like, I'm going to lean heavy into rust removal as you know, an add on service. And we booked like six jobs today. Uh, and, and this is not cheap. But you got to know what to use. You got to know how to use it, and uh, we're going to cover all of that. Cody's going to cover all of that at uh, at WashCon. And that kind of goes yeah. back to Mike's strengths as well. How many of you guys watching this right now have an email list? Like, let us know in the comment section. I can guarantee you, ninety five percent of everybody watching this video right now doesn't have an email list. They don't have anything keeping track of all their customers. They don't know how much they made last year. And so, like, those are kind of the intangibles. Those are some of the pieces that you need to have well, in place in order to. And, and so let me let me jump off of that because I'm going to have to hop off this call in a second anyway. But if Cody's done talking about his pillar, um, I'd like to I'd like to just mention that, you know, that that my my main thing and I touched on it briefly is organization. Right. You have to be organized. You have to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, if you don't have a business plan that you're following, that's that's keeping you accountable, then that's something that you should just stop watching after this. Get off of YouTube and figure out what your plan is for this coming year. You need to write down your goals. If you don't write them down, you're not holding yourself accountable. And that's one of the major things. Accountability, having a plan, organizing yourself, and staying on track. That's that's the biggest thing. People get, you know, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And it gets it's, it's very uh, easy to let that get out of control. And you just end up being the guy that out that who's out there just washing every single day and just kind of flying by the, the seat of his pants. And that is not how you run a successful business. That is how you, you set yourself up for failure. 
right? Most businesses fail. Justin knows the statistics off the top of his head on this, you know, how, whatever the percentages are for, for small businesses failing. And, and it's, it's huge. And so if you can eliminate some small percentage of that, having systems, having a plan, having, having, you know, something that's holding you accountable, then you're going to be way far ahead. And that's, that's one of the biggest things for success that, that I, I can preach and that I, I use every single day is having a plan, having, you know, goals and, uh, and, 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 and keeping myself accountable to those goals. Excellent. It's so important to take that. See the, see how these two things I said, me and Mike align, I can show you the Kims and I can teach you how to take, you know, Here's my example I usually use. What's a number one at McDonald's? Justin, what is a number one at McDonald's? If you go order oh, number one, what are you getting? What's that, a cheeseburger meal? No, that is incorrect. That, I'm glad you don't know that because it's I don't go to McDonald's. Good. I can tell you a Chick fil A is a chicken sandwich, though. Let me ask one of Mike's <laughs> kids in the back. Don't reveal yourself. <laughs> it's really uh, give me a number what, one at McDonald's. Hey, what's what Oh, I, she doesn't. She, we don't eat that. What's a number ten at McDonald's? Hey, big what's man. a number ten at McDonald's? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, but okay. your point is made. right. The, so what they did there is they took the the thing, right? Let's say it's Rush Rescue or one of our other chemicals, and they said we're going to make that into a package, and they made billions of dollars by structuring that way. I sell the thing, and I can teach you a little bit about it, and I can we sell the equipment. But I see so many guys they buy the equipment. And that it just sits in the driveway because they don't have the other piece of it. I'm Home Depot, man. I, you can come in here and buy lumber and hammers, and I can tell you, hey, this is how you use this stuff. And you know, I've built houses, and but I'm not leaving the store and coming out there with you to build on your job site. But what Mike's teaching you, these two things click together like like Legos. They go right together. Take the Kim and you make the upsell, right, or the cross sell, or the down sell, or whatever it is. But you now you're talking about an extra. Mike, how much on an average guy's wash truck? We're talking about thousands a month. Easily. I used to I used to avoid those things, those specialty jobs, because they don't know how to clean them. I'm talking about 15 years ago when I was right out of high school, and I didn't have access to the Kims. We just got internet in Roanoke a year ago. you know. So now when you've got the Kims, you've got the equipment, you've got the knowledge, now it's an Easter egg. It goes from something, oh, dang, I'm going to tell that homeowner I – I can't get that off your house. It's like the dreaded sentence. They don't hear that. But now that you've got the knowledge of the how, right? And now you're, you've are you got the system to look for it, put those two things together. Now you're selling number ones, baby. You're selling combo deals. The customer's more satisfied. You made more money and you, you've got it in a streamlined process. So where you're not just in, what I don't want you guys to do is to inherit another job. You want to start a business, not inherit a job. I ain't got a job. I don't work for nobody. I have a business. The business works for me. I don't. I don't want to work. I don't want to work in the business every day. I want to work on the business. There's going to be times where you have to work in the business, but the long term goal is to get it to where you got systems to where you're working on the business. You've got guys in the field. How do you know they're doing the freaking up sales? You know, maybe they're just lazy and don't want to do them. But you have systems in place that make sure that they have to do the up sales, right? Or they they can't leave the job site till they do. There's, those things are so important. You're talking about in let's say you run this wash business for 10 years. It's a half a million dollar opportunity in, in just in specialty cleaning jobs easily in a, in a decade. So these things go together just like Aaron and, and Justin's, their, their pillars go together. You want to be successful short term because if you don't, you're dead. But you also want to be successful long term so that you don't turn to leather on the wash truck. Right? It's like not a goal of mine. I don't want to turn into beef jerky on the wash truck. It's not... It's not a virtue to die on the damn wash tray. It's just not like it, it's also not a virtue to learn the hard way, right? You don't have to learn the hard way. Shortcut the learning curve, right? Be smart. Education is not a bad thing. It's served a lot of people really well, right? Utilize what you have available to you. So you don't have to figure things out the hard way. So you don't have to spend years and years and years figuring out. I did. I, I spent a lot of time figuring stuff out. There were resources that I used, uh, but it was nowhere near what we have today and what, you know, what the four of us can offer. So with all, with that being said, I do have to hop off guys. Uh, thank you. Enjoy the rest See of you, your, uh, your uh, quartet or threesome now. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, Mike.
that was a great segue into long, long play, short play with regards to marketing. And uh, me and Aaron will answer that here in a second. Cody, we had a super chat. We got to answer the super chats that come in. We appreciate it. Made me smile. Super chatted. What's up, Cody? I, I sent you a blueprint. Can you customize a skid for me? Bro, it cost you like 30 grand. <laughs> um, can I? I? I know I can. I know how, but I just I don't have the time to do stuff like that. So um, if I were to do like freelance work, I would have to charge just an absolutely insane amount of money, more than it's actually worth for what you'd get from me because I'm so busy with other projects. So I don't have the uh, I just don't have the time to do. I wish I did, man. I wish I did. We don't do a lot of customized stuff for that reason, because when you do, you know, 400 rigs a year, they can't be custom. If you're if you're Rolls Royce and you're cranking out like five a year, you know, they can be whatever you want them to be. But we're we're more of like a streamlined product line. So um, tell you if you're looking for something custom, I do have a course. Justin, would you like to tell this man about the course? Because it, it <laughs> probably would care of uh, most of what he's looking for there. Absolutely. We built a, a how to build a rig course and it's got more information than I can even regurgitate. I don't even remember all the stuff that Cody said because it's just like such a wealth of knowledge with regards to building equipment. Um, I will, once this live ends, I'll leave a link for that in the comment section description as well. But I mean, Cody, you go through every single facet from picking out, you know, trailer, skid, just everything from, from beginning yeah. to end, right? If you got that course and have a good local fab guy, and, you know, I'm sure you probably want to do it out of aluminum. You're good to go. That's going to be the linchpin is finding somebody local that's good with TIG. Uh, but if you live in any kind of decent size CD, there's there's somebody, you know, and that they'll charge you a little bit. But the thing is, the skid frame is going to last you forever. So that's what I would do if you want something real custom. You already kind of know what the layout is. Get that course. That'll that'll teach you the plumbing, the wire and all that stuff. And then. Just find you somebody that can can mock it up for you on the uh, aluminum side. So the way they're doing it right, you know, they, they know what they're doing. It's not going to – welding aluminum is tricky. So you want to make sure that the guy's name is not Casey. The, don't hire him if his name is Casey. That's just an inside joke there. <laughs> I would say the biggest – like the biggest value of that course as well is not just like figuring out how to build it, but also knowing the mistakes that Cody made early. And just regards with the, the, the design of it and everything else, I mean – it's just incredible because one mistake on your on your rig build can just screw you every single day. Let me tell you something. Yeah. As far as you know, I'm going to segue from that from that rig building course because awareness awareness is a superpower that a lot of people don't really uh, take seriously. Awareness of the pitfall and the things and the, the mistakes. Think about just having the awareness of like winterization stuff. Like, like there's guys out right now, as we speak right now, who are out there kicking and cussing because their entire uh, plumbing has exploded over this uh, hellacious hell freeze over storm that we just had because they didn't winterize that either they weren't aware or they didn't do it. But awareness to me it has brought and this is what I'm going to teach on long game. Uh, when it comes to your marketing, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to teach you, you don't know that you need to know it. And that's the fun part about my segment is that uh, you can't just find it on YouTube or Google it because you don't even know you need to know it. So you're not even aware mm -hmm. of what you should Google. That's the fun part about my segment is that I'm going to open your eyes and talk to you about how to really create i don't know if you guys remember that movie the blob in like the 1940s or 50s or maybe it was the 60s it yeah. was just like this this giant uh piece of jello <laughs> that kept growing and absorbing the entire town and i think it started in the theater or something yeah the, and it just the, kept absorbing the, every single thing legend <laughs> has it that it was red and black <laughs> <laughs> legend yeah. has it legend has it says i smoke out of it but um, but but that's a long game play, and that's how we're going. He says I, I was going to watch the Blob the other night. Um, I don't, I've never actually seen the full movie, but that is what long game when it comes to your website and when it comes to Google. That's what it can deliver for you. It can deliver almost an omnipresence on the platform to where you're not working for your leads anymore. And a lot of guys don't really understand 
what that's like. They don't understand the peace of mind that can happen, right? They're not even aware of that feeling. Think of the feeling when you wake up and you just know calls are coming in. You just know they are. You know they're, they're going to come in because they just keep coming in. How would you feel? I want you to imagine right now, how would you feel if you woke up tomorrow and not because of any flyers you put out, not because you were doing rock in or doing anything like that, all right? You know, I know some guys be like, I know calls are coming in because I done put out 7,000 flyers and my neck looks all wrinkly. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> out in the sun for weeks. No, 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 no. I'm talking about you can sit at your office and you know that leads are going to come in tomorrow for your business that you're going to be able to capitalize on and make money. That's what the awareness of how to control website, control Google. I mean, Cody, like like I was saying, we did a it was a fun experiment with Southeast Softwash this year. I came in in like June, July. We doubled the website revenue. Six months, doubled it, doubled the traffic, doubled the revenue. And that's, you know, when we're into multi millions of dollars a year you're talking we did a million in 2021 we didn't do this till 2020 you know mid 2022 so now you're talking about going to two million a year well i mean think about what that takes off of my plate now that's not profit too that's a gross sales number but there's a, a margin in there so and it's just going to continue to to amp up because of the stuff that aaron's done to the site and in my mind the way i look at it is like okay that's x amount of employees payroll that's covered every month you know i know i know it is not a maybe i know x amount of dollars is going to come into the company through the we had the products and we were we're pretty well known but it's just we're well known in pockets right and we want to be omnipresent like the blob so that now i can compartmentalize okay that amount of revenue takes care of this that amount takes care of this and okay th then here's all my website revenue shoot, man, it kills, you know, five or six birds here. So now I can do another project and I know I can cash flow. Aaron, you got that valve. Yeah, I can yeah. cash flow a project, right? Because I, I know I've got X amount of revenue is kind of, you don't want to say guaranteed, but it's about as close to a guaranteed thing as you can get. And that's the same thing with your wash truck. I forever, I'd have $50,000 in the bank on a wash truck scared to spend it. Because you're you're worried about the leads roller coaster all the time, and the more solid you can make that, the more that you know that you can reinvest, and maybe you need a new truck, or maybe you need to buy another rig, or you know hire a guy. But you, you can make those decisions a little bit easier and with a little more peace of mind when you're not so hit and miss on your incoming, your inbound lead volume. Absolutely. Absolutely, and when you're diversified, like Cody mentioned, right? It's good to have the long long game, but it's also good to have just other traffic right traffic that's not so search based but it's more so like you're getting in front of the customer you're grabbing that attention you're driving that lead elsewhere and so that's something that like i focus on i'm a huge proponent of just getting eyeballs i will turn eyeballs into customers you guys can go on my channel see how many eyeballs the channel got we did over 200 million views on forever self-employed last year and all of those videos had links all those videos drove traffic Bro, all those videos converted eyeballs into customers Bro, that's in dude. Like, this is insane, bro. Like, like you understand the value. <laughs> just <Yeah>. no <knowing> wash. <laughs> Boy it's, got more views than most of the country. <laughs> well, let me tell you, dude. Like some of those guys would literally try to put Justin on a surface cleaner. No, you go to wash. He's like, no, but I'm a marketing expert. Like, nope, you uh, go to wash. It's okay, like dude, dude. Justin should be like your marketing consultant, your guy who you're going to pay to run your social media and drive tons and tons of customers to Dude, your business. I don't know if these guys realize, like, Justin, if he wanted to, could drop off the face of the earth as far as YouTube is concerned and get probably a seven-figure contract marketing. That's the power of having the social media presence that size. And it's to even have the ability to sit down and listen to somebody like that of, He's not going to give you everything, but he's going to give you the stuff that's relevant to a guy washing and how you can leverage that. And make no mistake, I am not saying do the Facebook stuff in the early days and then as soon as your website hits, quit doing this. No, you do both. This gets you into survival mode. Website gets you long game. But once the website starts hitting, Justin, you can kind of explain, like, to me, now this is my play money. You know, my 
the leads that come in through Facebook, Instagram, these uh, these other platforms, yard signs and stuff. If I know my website's taking care of of the 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 fort, right? It's holding the fort down. Now this is this is my this is my fun money up here, and it's tons of fun money. So you don't you don't abandon one because you may have a slump on one. So you're always doing both. It's very powerful to put those two Legos together. And I would say at the end of the day, the biggest thing that it gives you is the freedom, right? It gives you the freedom to quote as high as you want, to not be afraid to lose those customers and to land jobs for more money than what you would have gotten otherwise, because you're just at a point where you have a non-attachment to landing those jobs. And that's a huge problem with guys who try to land these huge commercial jobs because they see these dollar signs flash up, you know, oh, I can make 30 grand on this one. Well, the guy like Mike, who's doing, you know, 30 grand is a piece of cake. He landed a $200,000 job this, right. you know, this year. So is he sweating 30 grand? No, he's showing up on site and he's going, you know, we'll take care of this. We'll take care of this. We'll upsell this. And then if you guys want it, you know, you can take it or leave it. And he's the guy landing the jobs because he's diversified the lead flow and he's got more than enough, you know, to take care of himself. Yeah. Soup is super like, it's just so fun to me to watch us come. It's almost like God ordained this for the industry. You know, that's why I take it personally when people attack us because one, they're stupid jackasses. But number two is like, no, we're like, this is really what you need, man. Like this is the, these are the four building blocks. You, you got to get off the ground early days, social media later. That's fun money. You got to have a website. We have, actually have guys that be like, no, I don't need a website. Okay. Listen, go stick your head underwater until you, get that out of your brain and then come back when, when you're sane and let's get your website going. Then you got to have equipment. That's a given. We're going to have good equipment. And then you got to have systems in place so that you're not, you're not coming home madder than you were when you worked 40 hours a week. Right. You, like running a business is, is, and it will be very stressful. It will be very stressful. Um, we just finished, you know, the year. And since we've been full time at Southeast, we're, we're over the $20 million mark. That's crazy. I've got more gray hair now than I had when I started, but it's getting better because we have systems in place. If I was still doing everything the hard way, dude, I'd, I would have just gave it up a long time ago because I could, I can't imagine not having some of these things that we have that run the company. What if I want to sell this thing one day? You know, what if, what if I want to sell it for $10 million one day? Well, if I'm in there doing it every day, I don't have any systems. Who's going to buy that? Because they're on, they're not going to be able. The day I quit and leave with the big fat check, they can't run it tomorrow. So you want to have you're thinking long term, right? I want to have this thing churning like a well old machine. And I think a lot of times guys just get so busy, man. Like you're, you know, spring, you just can't get caught up. You're like the little dude at the factory where another one's coming down the conveyor quicker than you can do your, you know, wrap it up and put it away. And so you you just can't ever find the time. Come to Washcon. Take a couple of days, go home. Maybe you take a week and you don't wash anything and you set, you build the foundation of your business so that you can be successful. Um, this, this last year, a lot of guys have probably went out of business with the economy. It's killed a lot of companies, a lot of, I mean, all across the, the board, different industries. Um, and I guarantee you a lot of those failed just simply because they didn't have their marketing squared away. When we saw that coming, I brought Aaron in and we doubled our marketing efforts. We didn't cut back. We doubled it. We, Got equipment in place, right? We have Mike's systems in place. We've got social media stuff in place. Aaron, before you were here, what did my Facebook page look like? Was anybody active on my Facebook page? It didn't. It didn't look. It didn't look. <laughs> Not existent. It, it was there, but when nobody. <laughs> owned it, Aaron posts on the Facebook page, you know, and I'll try to like, dang, I need to go in there and post something because I personally hate Facebook. I can't stand it. It's a cesspool of, of retarded them. But you got to have it. You got to do it. If you you can't complain, man. If you go out of business and you ain't doing the stuff, it's oh, I don't post. I don't post. I don't post on that Facebook page. There's a part. There is someone who's posting on that page. See, that's the, that's the part of the systems, right? right? That Cody's talking about. There is someone who is doing that. Right. And, and it is very calculated on how it's done. Um, it, it's, it's a unit, right? And, and Justin's going to teach you, teach you a lot about the, the social media part. But I, I, I'm going to answer this made me smile guy because I think this is uh, this is kind of my lane, uh, and and he addressed me directly. So 
and he it's a super chat so we appreciate it or justin appreciate it <laughs> just, hey, just, he's, he's trying to listen to tlc old scrubs just, <laughs> this dude has three super three more super chats he's done four super like chats a, 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 a drink <laughs> it's time to get a ticket come on make me smile <laughs> um so my leads are mostly scrubs looking for $99 work. How do I attract the upscale big player clients? I'll tell you, man, I remember like a distinct separation um, in the way people responded to me. Now, if you're not doing anything for marketing and you're not searching or putting your nets, your fish nets out in the big player client areas, then you're never going to catch big clients, right? Which means your website you know, just, you know, tagging into some of Justin stuff with the social media and, and your right targeting of how you're trying to put your nets in those areas so you can fish. Uh, it really all comes down to where you're fishing. OK, that's first. But the big, big one that I like to talk about, which is, uh, you know, kind of a secondary passion of mine, is how you walk and how you talk to these people, because this third super chat here says, too many customers calling, looking to chat like I'm a therapist. Aha, how do I focus my business on quality leads? All right, so I, I would give you something to implement today and take this to heart. Do not take it with a grain of salt. Take it as, as the word. Your customers are like, and I'm speaking from a man's point of view, your customers are like women, all right? When you want them, when you desire them and you're chasing after them, they don't want nothing to do with you. You are the, the bottom. When you're, oh, like all these movies, right? All the movies pretty much in the 90s, everything. It's like he's the rom-coms, right? That shit don't work. It don't work in real life, and it don't work with your customers, right? When you're constantly trying to woo them. Customers respond to people who are in positions of authority, know what they're talking about, and almost in a way have so much going on that you're not willing to be their therapist. Okay. Look, and they'll feel that the thing is, is that your customers who are calling you right now, as soon as they feel like they can dump on you like a therapist and start talking to you, bro, you, you're no longer in a position of authority. So you need to cut that shit out right now. We are not, not like we can talk about your place I want to talk about what's going on. I want to talk about your biggest concerns on the exterior of your home and your roof. What does it look like? What does it smell like? What is it like? I want to go through all the senses with that customer, but I keep them on task. You have to be in the position of authority and you have to take that position. You don't just become that one day, right? Like some, Ooh, this is a good one. Some guys literally think that one day they're going to be good enough. I thought that for years. I thought, man, one day I'll be good enough. The funny thing is that day never happens. The day you become good enough to speak in that position of authority is today. That's the day. You just take it. You just literally just take the coat and say, I'm the guy. And that's what you have to do. That's how you have to speak to these customers. And they'll appreciate it. They'll almost feel loved by you. They feel they feel resentful that you're allowing them to dump on you like a therapist. Like they're like, this dude's a chump, bro. Like I, like I, I he let me dump on him like a real contractor would have cut me off said, Hey, how can I help you with your project? Then they would have respected you, but you're allowing this to continue. So you have to walk a little taller, man. You have to take back your time. You have to take back your swag. You have to take back your confidence. Yeah. You have to it's walk a, like if you don't quite know everything. I'm not saying that you need to act like it like, and, and, and spout off falsehoods. All right. That's not what I'm saying. But you need to be look that I don't quite know that right now. I will get back with you immediately on that, though. I got some research I need to do on that exact thing. They respect that. Yep. Like just be so upfront that they cannot run from how upfront, honest, confident and just willing to do the work that you are and also willing to walk away. That's the key. It's it's a Dave Ramsey quote. To be unclear is to be unkind. And if you're you don't want to be rude, but if you're direct, you're polite, you lay the framework and they don't jive with that, then you don't want them as a customer anyway. Right. So they've self-selected out of your process. The problem you probably have right now is you don't have enough leads that you 
you feel like you can walk away from that, like Justin was talking about, that you yep. you're really attached to every lead. Like you know, we get guys. We've got a. Let me show you guys. Um, Monday here. Monday is the app that is Southeast Soft Wash, basically. So if we go into Monday, we can look at. Uh, I'm not going to show you stuff that you don't need to see, but uh, this is people. Okay, I can scroll. These are builds. They're all color coded. If I scroll over, you can see the what the build was like. Trailer mini, you know, mini trailer, 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 Loom Max. But we can scroll here forever. Jonathan has a category where we we color the dude's name in bright pink, and we call that a silly salmon. And there's not many, but there's probably eight percent of the calls, the leads that we get for equipment. We won't even call them back. We talk to them one or two times, email them, call them one or two times. And we we basically blacklist them. We call them a silly. It's a silly guy. I can tell you the two the two ends of the spectrum. Those guys are from. One of them is really broke redneck trailer park guy. Like I'm okay with this with that that guy. I used I used to live in trailer park, but he's so broke he can't like when he asks how much a skid is and you say it well. I mean he's like you know ten grand. Ten grand. He thought it was gonna be like eight hundred dollars. You know. We can't do anything with that guy. The opposite end of the spectrum is white collar guy that's going to have technicians running the truck. I will still sell to him, but I've got to do a lot of work to get him to understand. Every time his technician farts, he doesn't get get to enter a tech support ticket for the like. We had a guy this week enter a tech support ticket on a three year old system because it froze, and he's like, "Well, I don't know. My techs are out there. That is not Cody's problem. That's your problem." I, I'm not a franchise, bro. I don't owe you anything. This is a courtesy that I'm even calling you back because I like to keep my name in the industry really high. But like you, you, you know, so we've got parameters. And do you want to miss a $20,000 equipment sale? You're dang right I do. If it's one of those guys. And Jonathan knows when they trigger these certain things uh, and you'll get you'll get better at that. But if you don't have any parameters like Aaron is saying, then you don't have any any guardrails, right? The, you have your gut, your balls going in the gutter every single time that you try to bowl a strike uh, because the gutter, you got more gutter than you got lane. So you've got to have, you got to get some money in your pocket, get some wins, get some money, get some confidence, realize that you can make real money in this business and then get your lead flow right so that you can kind of self-select some of these people out uh, and you'll get them. You'll get them. Uh, you, Justin, would you say you'll get a lot more of that through social media uh than you would website like intent based versus interruption. You'll get a lot more of those weird people, but it doesn't matter. That's just part of the game. Am I right there? One thing. So Aaron's been like revamping. Like I started a website with Aaron. We got a GMB. We got the whole deal. One thing that I've noticed with the GMB leads, they, they are big leads a lot of the time, but a lot of the times they've called four or five other companies in order to get a quote. And so I've, I've noticed that there's a little bit more as far as interruption goes, I'm getting in front of somebody that's been neglecting the cleaning. And that's like, I, I need to get this done. I'll just call this guy. Cause it's easier than searching it up. It's easier to do it than doing any kind of research on that company and seeing if they're a good fit uh, or what other companies are even available. So there is a little bit of drawback to Google from some, some circumstances. And that's why it's so good to have both in your corner. Cause why would you not? Right. Well, you want to get the $30 or the $30,000 um, apartment cleaning call, but you also want to get the people who have been neglecting the cleaning and that just were reminded because you popped up in front of them. So I think you could benefit in both ways. Um, I do want to make me smile. Go he ahead, came go. in with another super chat. I want to make one comment here and then I'll let you roll on it. Here's the problem. I'm a naturally quiet guy. I don't have the alpha qualities that you have, Aaron. So how do I develop the skills to give that energy? I think you really missed what Aaron said. Aaron said you need to become it now. So even by you saying that you're a quiet guy automatically pre-assumes that you could never be an alpha. And by saying that Aaron's an alpha, he's already presupposed that he was an alpha. There was no thing in his mind that's like, well, I'm quiet. I might not, I might not ever be that. Another way that you build that up is you become it and you just tell yourself I am. And then you go out and you do a thousand quotes. You do a hundred, you do a thousand, just whatever. You go talk to a thousand people, go knock a thousand doors. You make a thousand videos on YouTube. You take the action necessary. You act as if until you become. Aaron, I'll let you go with it. I just yeah, want to I make think that, that's something that is kind of a misconception. Alpha and and you know beta, whatever. I mean, there's definitely cuck betas out there, and I like. Super. 
<laughs> the, the stigma is more probably a, a, a clearer representation of I'm kind of a loner guy. Like I don't I don't hang out with a lot of people. I have my core four and, you know, I have a few friends and I stay really tight with the people I'm tight with. So I'm probably more of that Sigma. If you guys and maybe small should probably look up that quiet uh, Sigma uh, you know, avatar for himself to see if, if that's something he can lean into, I would recommend, <laughs> it, you know, uh, but, but it's, it's something that you definitely have to know where you are, but you also have to say, Hey, look, all that uh, constitutes alpha, whatever in this game is the willingness to walk. And it's right. the same in courting. That's it. It's the same in dating. The person who's willing to walk holds the control. And the story. person who's willing to approach holds the control too, right? Now? Absolutely. So there's two. You're penetrating constantly. Take it as you will. You're always penetrating, meaning I'm penetrating. I'm going to approach, but I'm also willing to dip. Do you see? So that, what is that a byproduct of? Abundance, meaning I got enough leads. I got enough ladies. Look, I can, I can get another. All right. I, I want it to be you, but I got enough. And so all you have to do is lean into your marketing learn how to get the leads. And that doesn't take really any of these qualities I'm talking about. It just takes coming to WashCon, learning, get diving in, learning some of the technology, some of the stuff that we do, applying it, getting enough leads to where the quiet guy can walk on site and say, hey, this is the price. Yep. He shuts it's, up. It's a confidence thing. Um, I hope you're still watching this. I got a good example for you. One of my favorite movies, Sicario. Justin, my uh, Justin Aaron, y'all, I, I don't know if Aaron's seen it. Y'all seen the movie Sicario? Oh, I think I've seen it. Yeah, it's like the uh, was it the cartel cartel movie? guy cartel movie guy. Justin, go watch that, dude. It's a great movie. It's I guess it's about ten years old. Um, it's got Emily Blunt in it. The guy in the there's a guy in the movie. He's in Sicario one and two. He's got the uh, the the birth control glasses, what they call in the military. He's got he's he's an operator guy. That's based on an actual character. The guy's name is uh, Steve Forcing. Steve was a uh, Special Forces guy, Delta guy. My brother's in Special Forces. I've known several. I, I do the police stuff, and we train a lot. We actually get to train with some like pretty top-tier operator guys for the SRT team. So one thing you'll, you'll find if you ever get into that world is a lot of those dudes are not what you would think they are. They're not really a, loud. They're, you got Jocko Willink kind of guys, right? Like Tim Kennedy kind of guys. But the majority of them are really low-key. They're kind of wiry. They're kind of laid back, but they are so confident because they know what they're doing. They're a subject matter expert in their craft, okay? You don't have to be outgoing like us. You know, we all got YouTube channels. We wouldn't do that if we weren't. We didn't have a – I'm just – I hate it. I Everybody – I go to church – Everybody wants to talk to me. I'm like, I just like to sit here and be be here without I guess 76 people wanting to talk to me because I'm I'm funny and you know it's a blessing and a curse. But you don't have to have all that. That's not a prerequisite to what you're looking for. What you're looking for is confidence. I guarantee you, if you go do 25 house washes and you get paid, bro, you're gonna have some confidence. And you're gonna start feeling when it's not right. And you're going to have the confidence to back up and tell the customer, no, nope, your, your ball's going in the gutter. We don't do that. Nope, we don't do that. Nope, we don't do that. You know how anybody going to talk to me and tell me how to wash their house? My dad invented washing your roof. What you trying to tell me about? Well, I just don't think you should do it. I've had homeowners tell me before, well, I just don't think you should do it. I invented it. <laughs> you can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing. And that's the mentality you got to have. You got to be bigger than you are until you're bigger than you are. Don't do it wrong. Don't do things you don't know how to do, but be bigger than you are until you are. When I used to answer when it was me and Dusty, I would answer the phone, Southeast Soft Wash, how can we help you? Ain't no we. Is <laughs> one dude. Dusty done left for today. I'm by myself doing all this. How may we help you? We always wanted to sound big and confident. Now we, we could back it up because we knew what we were doing. So if you don't know what you're doing, first thing you got to do is get trained. That's what we're here for. Come to WashCon. If you don't have the money for WashCon, you can dig around on our channels and piece all this stuff together, guys. WashCon is just us condensing it in a weekend for you. But confidence, com so, competent, competence breeds confidence. And if you're, you're confident, you do. you're confident. 
Go sell uh sorry Cody, but this hit my brain. I said go sell uh go sell that pair of Yeezys that you got <laughs> sitting in your sitting in your little in your little trashy little uh uh was it closet and then go sell that PS5 and let's go learn how to make some money. All right. That's that's yeah. that, I'm I'm gonna end it on that. That's there's Wait, a lot I'll, of out there. I wanna I wanna pop this up on the screen last one, okay? Because he Dude. did a super chat that we didn't address and he said, Justin, I'm studying for a master's in business with an online college. You have one, right? Was the degree worth it? I'm about five classes away from a bachelor's. Um, but I will say this, college is like ideologies, right? They're giving you like things from a textbook. Like, let me define what you know free market is. We are going to give you the tangibles. I mean, how much would you pay? We have guys in the inner circle. We have guys that have taken local domination that are doing a quarter of a million a year plus. How much would you pay, Cody? To learn how to make a quarter million a year plus, like bro, all them, look, all them professors broke, dog. <laughs> that's right. Like I, I will show you how I was. I mean, I'm, I'm not teaching this at Washcon, but dude, 200 million views on the channel last year, right? Like college taught me nothing that was applicable to my business. College teaches you how to study, pass a test, and basically like endure, right? It's an endurance test basically because if you get all the way through college, you prove to employers that. You have endured. Whenever I became forever self-employed, I kind of changed the way I thought about everything. And if I was truly going to be forever self-employed, what would a degree do for me anyway? I wasn't really learning much. You will learn much more being in the field, doing things, but you can cut that learning curve down by just, you know, hopping be in the wash. Be more fluid with your money, man. Like, look, pressure washing doesn't have to be the end for you. You see what I'm saying? Like, you, you start a pressure washing business. You launch this thing up. You go to three hundred thousand dollars a year right like like okay go to 400 right whatever take some of that money and now you bought two more houses that are that are airbnb and they're renting right now you got now you got other other avenues that you put your money into it, like this isn't the end for a lot of you but ben wilson right ben's one of those guys who's been with us since the beginning dude is like in real estate got big plans to do stuff and it's like washing has given him that. So you got to be a little more fluid with your education money. And I'm going to tell you, made me smile. I feel the same way when it comes to me doing any investment. But here's the beauty I know now. And I've tried to really sense this in myself. Every time I have a that, that little fear feeling, and it used to be with like $500, you know what I'm saying, or $1,000. I used to have that little fear feeling. <laughs> like, yes, you know what I mean? I'd be like, oh, shit, oh, shit. Should I do it? But now it's with like half a mil. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot more money. <laughs> I would like, uh, stop myself. But it's a lot more money that I start to feel that little fear. And every single time I've taken the jump, guys, every single time I've invested in myself or took a training or took a course, a lot of these guys don't know that we all take, we all buy courses too. Yeah. We're taking, I'm constantly learning and educating and watching courses and videos on marketing and SEO and all this kinds of stuff. It, it, to educate myself so this isn't the this isn't the end like this is a piece of the journey for you a lot of you guys washcon is going to be a momentous time and a lot of the guys who came last year would say that as well but it's it's going to be a guys that are going to come again this year that that are, that, are bringing, yeah. that are bringing employees <laughs> because last year their business was not big enough they didn't have them they were one-man shows now they have employees that they're going to bring to washcon this year how crazy is that? That's pretty. I mean, I, I've seriously tossed around the idea in, you know, maybe in five years of I always wanted to run a food truck, not me personally, but I thought it would be fun. Probably a horrible idea, like small margins, a yeah. lot of work. I just want to do it. But now the business affords me the opportunity to do that is just like, man, we'll try it, you know, and see what happens. But like Aaron's saying, washing may not be your your end all be all, but the principles carry over to any service based industry. Um, I wouldn't go. I've taught Alyssa's twenty. I talked her out of college. This dummy was going to go to college. I got to go to college, Dad. I'm like, first of all, you need to go clean your truck out because you want them girls with a dirty vehicle and it's stuff all in the passenger seat. That's that's a tangent. But to go clean your truck, number two, why are you going to go to college and then get a degree to go? She wanted to be a social worker. My kids were adopted. Alyssa's got a heart that thinks about where she was at as a foster kid, and she wants to go help. I said, look, that's fine. You need to do that as a mission, okay? But if you're trying to make money, like, Dad finna give you a lesson here. You ain't going to make money. You're going to make, like, $38,000 a year. 
I'll give you that. Just stay at home and like do stuff for me. Like you could just you can just run around the shop and you know and make that's piddly. So why are you gonna go to school for four years? I wouldn't go to I I would I can't say I can't tell you what to do, obviously, but unless you're going into a really specialized field and you're thinking about, you know, entrepreneuring out into something like washing or a service business, that that degree's probably not gonna do a lot for you. You're gonna you're gonna regret it. My business, one of my business partners, Dusty, he's got a degree in electronics, never used it. The only thing he's done with it is uh, help design a smart blend, which, you know, we could have done easily. It wouldn't have took him three years of a degree to get that. So just be careful with your education. Everything is education. Like Aaron was saying, we educate ourselves all the time. I do it now because, by God, nobody's going to lap me. They ain't, you ain't going to lap me. Aaron, how many times does somebody give us an idea? I'm like, bro, I thought about that four years ago. But you've got to stay on the cutting edge of that. So anything can be education. Come to WashCon if you want to. If you're not serious about it, don't come because you're going to waste your money. But if you're serious and you want to give this thing a, a legitimate try, we, we can tell you how to do it. We can set, set you up so that you know what you're doing is right or wrong. I'll be, I'll tell you guys, I spent, I couldn't tell you how many times I press the button and run a $350 Facebook ad and get no freaking results. This is, you know, six years ago. I was like, Facebook sucks. It don't. I just didn't know how how to do it. So you've got to know that's what Justin's for. Should I get this app or not? Probably not, unless it's quote IQ. Probably not. <laughs> There's so many things out there competing for your money. We have no reason to tell you anything that's not going to work at Washcon. I'm not there to sell you a rig. We're going to give away a rig. Okay, not there to sell you a rig. We're going to tell you what works. We talk more guys, Mike. We talk more guys out of hot water systems than we sell hot water systems to. I don't care what, yeah. you buy, but the guy calls, he's what he's hell bent on getting a hot water. And Jonathan's like, well, that's fine. You know, we can do it, but what are you going to want? And you go figure out in 15 seconds that he just thought he needed it. We just saved that dude four grand. And you know what we tell him to do with that four grand, put it into marketing because that's, what's going to make you successful. We talk probably three to one, the hot water systems you guys see roll out of the shop. <laughs> For every one you see, we talk three guys out of spending that money because I want to see you be successful. It does more for me for that guy to be successful with that trailer with a cold water so that he buys another unit in three years and grows his company than a hot water that he literally cranked the burner up on two times. Right. It, the biggest, and, and to that point, I get I get questions all the time about, you know, I've got X amount of dollars. How much uh, should I spend on equipment? Right. Um, I want to buy this. I want to buy that. And, you know, ultimately, what, what's the best? Like I would say an eight to 10 gallon minute uh, gallon per minute machine would be the ideal machine to get out there and be the most efficient and the most profitable. Is that feasible if you're just starting out and you've got fifteen hundred or eighteen hundred dollars? I say save your money. Buy a four gallon per minute machine. Buy a soft wash system from, you know, from Cody. And, and that's going to be more than $1,500, but you can, you can put together something that will allow you to get out there and be efficient. I would say, just like Cody said, don't spend it on the hot water unit. Don't spend it on an eight gallon or a 10 gallon per minute unit right off of the, you know, right off the out gate, invest in your marketing. Because if you don't have that base, if you don't have the customers, what difference does it make? What equipment you've got sitting in your 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 driveway because that's what's going to happen if you don't invest in the in the marketing it doesn't matter what equipment you have the right investment will return multiples and we can wrap here in a minute guys but like the biggest success story that we had at a washcon last year was um riley what was his first name last name was riley he had the cabinet uh, painting business. chris chris riley he, he chris, got a chris, max from us yeah chris riley got the vip ticket was there for two days Probably about a week after that, he had, he he does a cabinet painting, which is a super niche service. He learned the Facebook ad strategy, did thirty thousand dollars. He sold thirty thousand dollars with the Facebook ad strategy after WashCon, just because he was missing a little tweak on what he needed to do with his ads and his ad strategy. And we sat down and I talked to him and I showed him how to set up the ad, how to do everything. Thirty grand, right? Yep. And Chris was all Chris cabinet business is like balling right he's freaking crush i'm talking about i ain't gonna throw numbers out but he didn't need to soft wash like he was fine yeah. but it's like that little thing and chris is like our ideal guy you know he's he's smart guy he's not lazy 
we're going to give him a couple of puzzle pieces and he's like duh got it and then you get to see him 10x that investment that's Wait, so I Chris is ready to he's ready to put down the money to learn and then you know double his investment triple his investment 30 grand but I, I don't i don't understand like if if he had a successful business why would he possibly want to go and and branch out and do other things to make him more money that just doesn't make sense to me <laughs> <laughs> he crazy as hell. Like want to more money. <laughs> he must be trying to scam people out of their money. Like we had, guys, we had a comment this morning on the on my channel, and I screenshotted it and shared it. It was an idiot. He got like four views on YouTube. These guys are scammers. They couldn't make it on a wash truck. They couldn't make they, they couldn't make two million dollars on a wash truck. So they do all these things to take money from people. Yes, we do. We take money from people. It's the same thing a person does on a wash truck. They take money from people. How many chances you're going to get to learn from a guy that's built 2,000 rigs and and freaking invented roof cleaning? How many chances you're going to get to learn from the guy with the biggest social media following in the industry? How many chances you're going to get to learn from the guy that pretty much built the first app for the industry? How many times you're going to get to talk to the guy that's like there and they don't even know like you, Aaron plays that SEO stuff. Aaron's like, real behind the like, scenes. He, he don't just tell kinda, what he, he, what he knows. Up. Or with the SC, the website stuff because it's like it's it would turn into a beast, but they they would be big mad, big mad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not it's not that we we don't do this because Wait, we're not mine's not that big. <laughs> <laughs> you little man, <laughs> size doesn't matter, Mike. That's what they say. You little man. <laughs> I gotta get my marker be, out. But we, I, and I'll, we, I'll, we rolled out a we rolled out a freaking metering valve this year, the first soft wash metering valve. We're rolling out something in a few months that's even bigger than that. And it's not you don't have to be currently sitting on a wash truck to know what it takes to run one. I got one sitting at the shop. I don't currently run it because my wash guy turned into my sales guy, and we live in the middle of nowhere, so it don't you know. Right now, I don't want to hire anybody and put on there, but. I've been doing this 25 years, man. It's like since literally since 1995 with my dad. I was a little kid riding around doing roof cleanings with my dad. It's like, Mike, you, you had guys out every day. You know, you had guys, you shut down a landscape business just because this was a little easier, more profitable. Like run yeah. multiple off the truck businesses. We don't, I, I don't even feel like engaging it because it's, if you're questioning my authority at this point, <laughs> like, listen to me, you know where you can go with the that, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I think people, the, the problem, the problem with a lot of people is they are so small minded, right? And when, when Cody sent that screenshot of this, this gentleman that, um, you know, was, was trying to pontificate on, on, on our inability to run businesses. I, I run a couple businesses. I think I've been relatively successful in my life. Um, I made a few dollars here and there. And um, the bottom line is, in, unless you're, unless you're looking for bigger and better opportunities, it, then, then you're going to be, you're going to be stagnant and you're going to be in one place for the rest of your life. Um, I still have wash trucks, Am I sitting on one? Am I out there washing? No, I don't have to because I've got good employees that we've put in place. We've trained. We've got systems in place that allow me to do other things, right? And and what I told the guys this morning was I was like, you know, people like that, they don't think about somebody like um, Elon Musk. Elon Musk went to, he, you know, came from South Africa. He, uh, when he graduated from college down there, he's a smart guy, um, you know, with a specific degree in engineering which is important i've got a diploma right back there i went to the citadel i graduated from college i went for uh, i was a political science major it did mean nothing um and and so with that being said elon went to stanford or yale or somewhere for like two days he quit um and then he and his brother started a company called x.com x.com merged with another company that company turned into paypal they sold it for billions of dollars okay he then took that money and invested it in I want to say Tesla was the first one. Then he went to SpaceX and then he's got, what is it? The AI one with the Neuralink. And he's, I mean, this dude is continually investing in his future, you know, in businesses in his future because he's not going to, he's not going to get with his, his feet stuck in the sand and neither should anybody else. Right. It's just like somebody like that that would say, Oh, these, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do all these different things because you're, you know, you're not good at that. So you're trying to do all these other things. No, 
I'm good at that, which allows me to do all these other things. Right. That's what lose. That's where people lose it, right? They just they don't understand. And when you don't understand, it just tells me that you're never ever going to be, you're never going to achieve that next level of success. You could have a great success out there washing trucks, and you can make a or wash on the truck washing. You can make a good living doing that, right? I actually but, like. I enjoy it. I just I can't, I tried to do it last year. My goal was to to for content for the channel. I wanted to go me and Dusty go back and watch. Because it's right. fun. it's it is so satisfying. Oh, it's it's unbelievably biggest, satisfying. I think the biggest takeaway from this though is a little self reflection on everybody watching. I believe you're hated in direct proportion to how successful you are. The more successful you are, the more people are going to try to knock you off the mountain or knock you off the hilltop, if you will. And if you don't have anybody throwing stones at you, you need to you need to take a look inside because you are not being successful. You're not living up to your purpose. You're not fulfilling it, right? And so. We got a lot of people that try to knock us off the top of the mountain, but it's just a, it just shows, you know, success. And hopefully, hopefully in your markets, your competitors are trying to knock you off of your mountain, right? Yeah, like man. I want, I, I'm friendly with, with a- anybody in my market, right? I'm, I'm to the point where, you know, I've realized that there's enough work to go around. I don't have to, I don't have to hate my competition, right? Like I encourage them. I, I want to help them. I'll do whatever, whatever I can. Right. Um, but in your market, if your competitors aren't looking at you and saying, damn, how's he doing that? How, I, I want to take him down. If, if you're not at the top and they're not trying to get above you, then you need to really work harder because you want to be the guy that everybody is trying to be. There's you know? also and- a freedom ladder, right? Like we all quit like nine to five type jobs to start our own business because it like led to more freedom. And then after that, we were like, okay, how do we scale up from here? We want to get better at marketing so we get more freedom. We want to land bigger jobs so we can get more freedom. We want to get off the truck so we can get more freedom. We, I want to leverage YouTube so I can get more freedom so I don't have to work all the time and I can have people watching my videos, bringing in views. Everything is about freedom. So when you see moves being made, it's, it's an, a freedom acquisition. We're trying to get more freedom. We're trying to get more time. We're trying to get more resources. And if you're not making those moves, this is I'm just cutting the learning curve down for you guys, because if you don't see the value of surrounding yourselves with a guy like Cody, who three years ago, you know, didn't have his own company, but now he doesn't even have to go into the shop to make money that day. Or a guy like Mike for 20 years has sat in his office and scheduled the routes and landed the big jobs. And he doesn't even have to go out and and hold a wand tomorrow or spray water on anything like you. You're really missing the point if you think that the value is in holding the wand your entire life. <clears throat> and that's yeah. It. Yeah. And, and, you know, there are, there is a tremendous amount of money to be made out there just washing. Right. So you might be at a point in your life where like, Hey, I'm just getting started. These guys are talking about going out there and doing all these other things. It's not necessary. Um, and, and it does take time. This stuff does not happen overnight. Like, like Justin just said, I've been doing this for a very long time. Um, very rarely do I ever flex uh, as far as like, you know, monetary gains and how my, my pressure washing business is doing. But we, we have spent many years developing relationships, putting things in place, you know, working on our marketing. And, and it's a continual thing. Like if you guys have heard me talk, I do the same things every single day to continually improve my presence, you know, in the market. Um, we're going to book in, 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 say, a three week period because I was going to say this year, but I, I sent in a couple invoices at the end of last year, about $160,000 in about a two and a half week period, right? That's a, that's a good couple weeks, right? That's a great year for most people. Right. But if you guys take the things that we're implementing, we're teaching you guys at the things that we're teaching and you implement them, this is something that you can achieve as well, right? There, there is tremendous opportunity out there. So, you know, I wish everybody a happy new year. I hope you guys set goals. I hope you hold yourself accountable and I hope that you, you know, invest in yourself and you can do that in any manner. You don't have to come to WashCon. You don't have to buy anything from us. You don't have to, you know, call Cody and get a skid. You don't have to, you know, get a footbridge site. You don't have to use quote IQ, but these are all things that are going to help you gain that next level of success. Right. But the, the key takeaway I think is, if you want to be successful, you have to believe in yourself. You have to invest in yourself and you have to have that, that just that no fear mentality to go after it, be relentless. And, and you have to be a killer. Yep. You, you look at Mike's, Mike's a good example of that. Aaron's brother's a good example of that Pierce down there in, you know, the Gulf of Alabama, just crushing it. It's, it's, it's doable. Like we, we could just rattle off names. You know, we've got 
people in the in the group that's been in the game a year or two and they're they're getting their second truck and they're going to do you know crazy but invest in yourself get the education another thing i'd like to encourage you to do is to if you come to washcon make sure you network with the other guys that are there because us four we can attest to this that since what two years we've been hanging out all of our networks have went way up because we feed off each other we if i get lazy the three of them are going to leave me in the dust it's it's a challenge for me to stay sharp, to stay on the game, right? How many videos do you post this week? Like Mike caught me this morning. I freaking forgot to do a posted <laughs> comment because I was driving to LaGrange when the video uploaded in the middle of nowhere. And then I was like, God dang it. I didn't even do a, a pinned comment. So we keep each other sharp. We keep me and Aaron have partnered on some stuff. Justin and Mike got some thing with the, the app. We've got, we're cross pollinating and just, it's crazy. And then, things start happening on orders of magnitude. You're talking about, bro, like, we're, Aaron, we're freaking bigger than, like, we're Kimline and GF, bro. We don't eat, it really ain't sunk in yet. It really ain't sunk in yet. Like, the, the other thing is, we don't really take the time to really reflect. We just continue to push next, into it. What's even, next? Yeah. Next? Next? That's, you know. that's my biggest issue. Is I, I've, I haven't celebrated anything in like six years, man. <laughs> like, I still, like, I still do a fan by the gym. I'm still wearing a damn $35 black rhino hoodie, dude. Like, I, <laughs> I will say, though, I will say there's a reason for that, at, at, at least from my perspective, because the industry that we, it's a perfect storm the industry is is kind of on the precipice of up and coming in the next decade. It's what lawn care was when the turns kind of came out. And the four of us realized that. And we we realized that we've got the personalities to capitalize on it. We realized we've got the brains to capitalize on it. We realized we got a little bit of cash flow to capitalize on it. And so, yes, we've got some big wins in the bank, but we're going to pop these next ones out, baby. Because if you sit here for 20 years, Mike, you've seen it for 20 years all this low hanging fruit where we're like, dang, there's not a purpose made app. Dang. There's not a purpose made freaking metering valve. We're just using random ones. Dang. There's not a, this we're going to pop these things, dude. And that's why we're going to stay like, good luck, bro. Good luck as well. It should be. If somebody out there can do it better then you, you deserve to knock us off the mound. Good luck. I got the high ground. Like it, it's slick and I got tar and I'll throw fire on you. It's gonna take a couple of years too, bro. I don't hate you personally. It's like Mike said, he's he's friendly with all of his local competitors. We've got other guys that build equipment and do training. Uh we were talking about Doug Rucker the other day. Somebody thought we were throwing shade at Doug. We like Doug. Doug good hey, dude. I don't think I've ever spoke to Doug. Good dude. AC Lockyer, good dude. AC's gone to bat for me in the Facebook groups because I wasn't even on Facebook. Me and AC are very friendly help each other out. I've had guys try to talk crap about his company. I'm like, no, dude, you don't even bring it over here. They build excellent equipment. Michael Hinderleiter, great guy out in Texas. There's some other people we don't fool with. Hey, they're they're going to have to start paying us, bro, to keep mentioning hey, they all got, these names. Like, and they don't have enough money. You can be, you can be friendly. I'm not going to help them like too much, you know, because it's, it is competition at the end of the day, nor should they help me too much. But it's when you've got some confidence, Confidence breeds confidence, and it allows you to not have to be, you know, a jerk when you don't really want to be that way. You can be friendly. We can go. We're going to go to the convention. That we didn't go last year. We're going to go this year. We got the biggest booth at the convention. We're going to throw stuff in the. We're going to have a freaking Humvee and a Land Rover Defender with machine guns on it. But we can do that because we've got some wins. But you guys got to do the same thing. You've got to get some wins, but you can't sit on your laurels once you get those wins because somebody is coming. Somebody's trying to take your lunch every day. There is another dude. I hate to break it to you, but you're in a low threshold of entry business, guys, on a wash truck. You are. So any day now, another guy who also has a smartphone like you and also has a wife that can post in Facebook groups, what are you going to do that's going to set yourself apart that you, it's not that you can't be taken off the mount, but it's really hard to be. And it gives you a little bit of breathing room, but you've got to always be pushing that edge. So make sure you network with other guys that are going to hold you accountable. Girls, you know, we got some girls that have took the class and they're crushing it, dude. But they're they're in the groups. They're active. They're like you said earlier, Mike, they're they're implementing. They don't just listen and absorb. They take it and they go implement it. And it's like, yes, they, they did what we said. Look, 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 hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
The you most successful it. people that we – that like, and I'm going to give you guys a huge tip right here. Like it's across the board. The most successful people that learn from us or we meet or whatever, they bet on themselves by coming to the event. They're there. They network with other people. Like Cody said, they go back and they implement and they get better and better and better. And they are light years ahead. Like our top people that have come through our stuff, like I would put them up against almost anybody who's you, who we've never seen before. You know what I mean? Like they are that good because there's a certain – they have certain characteristics yeah. to them, the most successful people. Yeah, that's true. It's killer. That's true. About like Ben Wilson, you know, we use Ben a lot because he's local to Aaron, but – Dude's laid back, like dude's chill. Ben's a killer, bro. <laughs> I'd hate to be up against Ben in in that regional market because yeah. he's just gonna get it. Like Ben's gonna get up and do a five thousand dollar job today. Like it's just gonna happen. Reggie, right. Reggie's one of them guys, dude. Reggie's right there. He's telling. Yeah, yep. Reggie's been a lot the whole time because he wants to soak it up. He wants to be a part. Reggie, of it. Dude, that's the thing. That's the biggest intangible is being around like minded people, soaking it up. Like the people in the in um the group have done so much better because they can see every single day the other guys as wins. They see how hard other guys are pushing. They see what's working for other guys, and they're able to multiply results because if you're just running it by yourself, man, you're like a caveman out there. You're still you're still putting sticks together, and other people are just – they have a lighter, and they're like, oh, no, dude, all you need is a lighter <laughs> right here. You know what I'm saying? I still, see, that's a good analogy. I'm not good at those like Cody, but that was pretty good. <laughs> good one, good. Proud of you. So, <laughs> Throw away the sticks, get the lighter, come to WashCon, comment section, description of this video. Anything else before we uh, roll, nah, boys? No, man. I got to go have some dinner. Me too. Well, I got fine. Mexican in there. Uh, probably cold now. We're <laughs> yeah. All right, All right guys. guys. Thanks so much for joining us.